Hi gang, Rob here. It is the evening of 9-11-2016. Yeah, 15 years. 15 years out from the day we lost, gee, nearly 3,000 civilians, first responders, in the worst terrorist attack ever perpetrated on the free world. Our prayers continue to go out to the families and loved ones of those who lost their lives that day and for the hundreds more uh, who've lost their lives or become sick working on the cleanup effort in Manhattan uh, after that day. Let us never forget. But life does go on, doesn't it? And knife reviews do go on. This, I think, is quite an interesting knife. Uh, and kind of a fitting knife to look at on the Apostle P channel on September 11th. This from Will Moon Custom Knives. From Custom Knife Maker. From the mind and the hand of Custom Knife Maker, Will Moon. An American living in Carolina, maker of some pretty sweet and unique modern folding knives. The Mark 10 is this one, uh, sort of a larger and more tactical version of Will's Mark 6 titanium bolster lock folder. The Mark 6 came in a variety of blade shapes, and I think the Mark 10 comes in a couple as well. Uh, this with a decidedly more tactical than utility bent. Uh, blade length on this monster is a full four inches. And, you know, this is the moon interpretation of the classic Bowie style clip point. Although it's a bit different in uh, shape and proportion to a normal clip point. The clip starts way up here, right where my middle finger is. Almost muskratish in its clip point shape. With a large flat that Will is known for, a hollow grind and a deep one that Will is also known for. Blade thickness looks to be four, four and a half millimeters. I didn't measure it. The height of this blade is 1.2 inches. Um, the broadest blade I think Will has ever done. The frame is 0.72 inches thick at the front. And it tapers to 0.52 at the back uh, without the clip. <clears throat> the frame is all titanium. The scales on this Mark 10 are sort of a all nearly polished G10 with some nice stippling for grip and it just catches the the fingertips perfectly mechanism is pretty standard moon we use the caged ball bearing or thrust bearing system for the pivot an internal stop pin and a 3 16 diameter pivot which is a little beefier than most wheel moon knives he wanted this one to be uh, a brute and it kind of is weight on it is 6.4 ounces and according to Will's website weights on the Mark 10 will vary between five and a half and seven and a half ounces depending on handle and and scale materials blade materials and configurations but this one right in the middle of that range at 6.4 ounces Pocket clips are G10, I think, on all the Mark 10 knives. Uh, a very, a very good material to use for a pocket clip. Virtually indestructible, scratch resistant, a good amount of spring, um, and <laughs> it retains well and it comes out of pocket pretty well, especially with the added grip of these corrugating grooves in the clip. Uh, it's difficult to insert. <clears throat> Lift is pretty small. And, you know, the effective 
angle or curve of the retaining nub on that clip is pretty abrupt. Uh, I can't insert it with one hand. Um, maybe, you know, depending on your level of coordination and the way your pants fit and how thick your pocket material is, maybe it could be done, but I couldn't get it done. Uh, it is a Will Moon knife, so it's probably a flipper, and it definitely is. And it is either light switchable or push buttonable. I think it sort of likes a push button more than a light switch. Action is superb, as with all Will Moon knives. Um, when closing, the natural position for my thumb to release the lock bar does clear the flipper tab. But if it doesn't, no big deal because the tang is nicely ramped for the detent ball. <clears throat> see if we can see that. The darkened area of the blade tang is where the lock bar interfaces. And nearest to my finger, maybe you can see a slight semicircular cut. There it is. That is the ramped area for the detent ball to ride. So no hang-ups on that detent ball when closing. <clears throat> Pretty cool. Now, this is a Wilmoon bolster lock knife. Uh, that means that the scale shrouds the frame lock lock bar for, oh, what, about two-thirds of its length, meaning that you get all the advantages of a frame lock, when the knife is open, your grip does help hold the frame lock in place and the lock bar can be nice and heavy as most frame lock lock bars are. But when you're opening the knife, look where all my fingers are. Nothing is pressing on the lock bar and forcing that detent ball into the hole in the blade, making the knife, uh, the flipping action of the knife, sensitive to finger pressure. It's just a brilliant design. Um, I'm surprised more companies don't use this. don't think Will has a patent on it. <clears throat> it's just a really slickly operating knife. Uh, I like Will's stuff. You know, sadly, I'm a lefty. I'm not sad I'm a lefty, but I am sad that most of Will's knives are well, all of them I've ever seen are right-handed. You know, the clips certainly aren't reversible. Uh, you know, I've never had the uh, available funds to commission a one-off from Will, so I just sort of have to admire his stuff from afar. Before I look closely at some of the details on this knife, just a little word about Will. Um, Will and I have shared some customers over the last couple of years, and We've, you know, <laughs> we've had some counseling sessions about how to keep them happy. Some of the more interesting customers that we share. And uh, I enjoy talking to Will immensely. For a young guy, he just has a depth of knowledge, wisdom, and patience that um, I think is pretty rare. Lately, though, just from, you know, looking at his, <clears throat> his Facebook posts, Hearing some of the flap on some of the forums, apparently Will's been a little cranky. And I think maybe Will's got his dauber down a little bit. I think if I remember correctly from reading his Facebook post, maybe even considering or has made a decision to stop making knives. I hope that's not true. I hope that's just a, a passing discouragement. So for those of you guys who know Will and have uh, purchased and used his knives, maybe reach out to him, give him, a, give him a pat on the back, come alongside him, give him a little encouragement, tell him we would miss him terribly in his work. I know I would. So let's look closely at this Mark 10. And by the way, this one came, and you guys might have seen this on Will's website, this one came with a gold Cerakote at least on the blade, uh, the owner, my uh, viewer and customer, Jack, sent this back to Will to have the Cerakote removed from the blade. He thinks it operates a little more smoothly than it did with the coating, and he likes to look better. I'm kind of glad that he left the gold 
hardware though. It looks pretty good. Just a nice little pop of color. So we'll design this to be quick out of pocket. So uh, a grippable pocket clip and a lower profile flipper tab than he usually does. And frankly, it's plenty. I wish all of his flipper tabs were this size. Could even be smaller. So it won't snag in the pocket. It's quick into action. Designed again as a tactical knife. Will calls this his double bolster lock. Meaning, not only do you have a bolster that participates in the locking mechanism up front by the pivot, you also have well, what traditional knife guys would call an end cap or a butt cap, but it's not really. It's it's part of the uh, it's integral to the titanium frame slabs, <clears throat> but it gives the knife more strength if you happen to be employing it as a non-lethal or lethal impact device. And pretty well designed for that, I must say. Let's look at some details because this knife is a myriad of chamfers. <clears throat> it's a large knife, but Will keeps it ergonomic and small feeling in hand and frankly beautiful with all these chamfers. Let's sort of walk down the, from the tip of the blade to the butt of the frame and look at them first. This isn't a chamfer, this is a swedge, and a beautiful swedge. Quite symmetrical on both sides, that's kind of redundant, it's symmetrical on both sides. Hmm. And that swedge gives way to a chamfer at the spine, and that chamfer changes profile as we move rearward into the jimped area. So the jimping peaks have a narrower width, much narrower than the overall width of the stock, making it super effective. Then we've got the relief cuts, again at an angle, inside the frame for your thumb when the knife is flipped to make it comfortable. It just works well. Let's look at the frame. Look at all these facets. One, two, three. One, two, three. At the front there, and then these gorgeous chamfers that come rearward. And you're going to notice asymmetrical chamfers at the butt end of the knife because of the way the clip works. So the chamfer on this side of the frame sort of emulates the same angle as the frame and pocket clip on the other side. Sort of. Not exactly, but I get it. Got some more jimping here if you're in sort of a choke up reverse grip. That jimping becomes not really useful if you're getting maximum reach on the reverse grip. And then in the back of the underside of the knife, we got more jimping. That is useful in a reverse grip. Don't really notice it in a hammer grip. Your hand's really almost forward of that jimping. Your pinky contacts it just a little bit. Now Will says, although he designed this to be purposefully tactical, it also works great for utility. So let's kind of look. Our saber grip, which is more of a tactical grip than a utility grip, is superb. The hammer grip as well. No uncomfortable flipper tab encroachment. The draw cut grip, again, really nice. And the overhand pinch, really nice for cutting. Uh, this is a really well-designed, modern, modern folder. You know what we haven't talked about yet? The blade steel. <laughs> this, guys, is some pretty exotic stuff. It is CPM Rex 121. Uh, I don't think Will made too many knives out of this steel because he was probably yelling a lot and throwing stuff when he was trying to grind it. So CPM Rex 21 was a high-speed tool steel designed in 1998. And 
it's from Crucible. <laughs> Here's what they were after. I'm just uh, reading off the data sheet. Uh, it's a high, high vanadium, high cobalt, high speed tool steel designed to offer a combination of the highest wear resistance, highest attainable hardness, and red hardness, meaning when it's hot, how hard does it stay? Available in any high speed steel. As far as hardness is concerned, it's truly a champion capable of reaching, and this is not a misprint, 70 to 72 HRC. Uh, that's like 10 points higher than most knives that get real hard. So for the record, officially, the Rockwell C-Scale maxes out at 70, and some hardness checks on Rex 121 are off the chart. <laughs> uh, and so it's really hard and has really, really high wear resistance. Uh, and the asterisk is, it's very difficult to grind and extremely difficult to sharpen. And here's, just listen to these outlandish statistics. Rex 121 carbon, 3.4%. Tungsten, 10%. So 10% of the mass of this steel is tungsten. Vanadium, 9.5%. Only 4% chromium, uh, but 9% cobalt. I think it's probably still pretty rust resistant. You know, I don't think it's going to rust like crazy, even though it barely has any chromium in it. Um, wow. 10% tungsten. What I don't know is how tough it is. And, you know, I'm not going to go... Uh, I'm not going to go beat this on anything to see. But one one thing, though, I'm really glad that Jack didn't want me to sharpen it. <laughs> but Will did a nice job. Check this out, guys. You know, it's a little loud. It's a little toothy. But it cuts limp. There's a little snag. It cuts limp catalog paper really well. It might even push cut. Nah, maybe not. Well, it wants to. Not quite. But uh, that's pretty good for the stock edge on a knife. Thank the Lord. Because I don't really know how this would be to sharpen. I've never done this stuff. Don't really want to. Um, you know, it may behave a lot like a ceramic. That's one of the things I like about Will. You know, his design eye is pretty consistent, but when it comes to uh, materials, he'll try anything. And, you know, he tells us when it doesn't work out so well. I haven't really heard him talk about this Rex 121, though. I can tell you this, man, what a nice knife. And everything about it is so rock solid. You know, lockup's a little early for my taste, probably about 15 18%, but it doesn't feel like it's in danger of slipping off the blade tank. Uh, not remotely. No, no rock, no slip. You know, for a handmade one-off custom knife, really nice centering. Just a beauty. I love it. I know Jack likes it a lot. Liked it enough to send me a Facebook message and ask me if I wanted to do a video on it. Sorry it sat here so long, Jack. I'll get it back in the mail to you tomorrow, my friend. Very cool. Guys, you, you remember I did a video on uh, young knife makers and how we should support them? Um, here's a guy truly worthy of that support. And much uh, to his chagrin and his reputation might have suffered from it. He's had some crackpot customers, guys. Some dishonest, unreasonable people who, you know, have nothing better to do than drop Will's knife, then uh, you know, lambaste him in forums, and uh, that's that's not Will. <laughs> he is just a super neat young man. like him a lot, and really like his stuff. We're not even going to talk about <clears throat> this. No need. But on an otherwise beautiful knife, uh, that's something we're just going to overlook tonight. 
the uh, the craft of American knife making is in good hands. Will, don't get out of it. Keep at it, my friend. We need you. That's all for this one, guys. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember the word and Will's Mark 10 are sharp. <laughs>